Alright, hey guys, welcome back to the channel, or welcome if you are new here. Now today I'm coming at you with part 9 of the Aquarium Reaction Series. Basically, I find a whole bunch of the absolute most disgusting and grossest and just downright horrible aquariums I can find and then react to them, obviously on camera for you guys. Now if you haven't checked out part 8, I definitely recommend checking that out. That one was pretty bad. Trust me, the tanks in that one were pretty bad. However, here we are with part 9. Today I was able to find a whole bunch of disgusting and just downright horrible aquariums that we're going to be reacting to for today's video. I have to warn you, some of these are really bad. These tanks are going to make you cringe if you um, know anything about fish. Be prepared for this one, it's another bad one. Without further ado, we're going to start very very strong with the first disgusting aquarium I could find, and that's this. Um, I don't even really know what to make of this. This looks like an old classic gumball machine that someone turned into a fish tank. And let's just say some things are not meant to be fish tanks. I think a gumball machine being one of them. Uh, that water looks like iced tea. It's absolutely gross. There's no real filtration on this tank. It's just an under gravel filter, which I don't even see any air pump or anything really moving around in there. So it honestly looks like there's just an under gravel filter with no actual like pump or uh, air pump circulating the water. It just looks like someone unplugged it and called it a day, to be honest with you. Uh, these two poor goldfish in here are really not doing well. They honestly look like ghosts, they look like zombie fish, um, which really isn't probably the look you're going for in a fish tank. Goldfish obviously need a bigger aquarium than a gumball machine, and as I mentioned earlier, some things are just not meant to be fish tanks. This next aquarium is very concerning for multiple reasons, uh, and the first reason, surprisingly, is not that you can't see anything inside of it. Um, it's actually all the watermarks on the front. This aquarium looks like it was overflown. Um, all those like water streaks down the side. The only thing I can imagine is that someone was filling up this tank and the whole tank just started overflowing down all the sides. And I mean, that's a big problem in itself. Um, but to make matters worse, there's a power strip hanging next to the aquarium. And as we all know, power and water do not mix. So when this tank was overflowing, if that power cord were there, I don't I don't quite know what happened, I don't have too much backstory to this tank, um, but that could have been a lot bigger of an issue than than what it was. I would never recommend storing your power strip to your aquarium on the side of the tank. You should always have a drip loop and you should always keep the power strip um, away from water, which is the complete opposite of where this one is. But now, besides the obvious look of the outside of the aquarium, the look of the inside of the aquarium is not much better. I see like two fish, there's like no decor in there, it's just substrate, the water looks gross, I doubt that filter is even working correctly, like what are we doing here? Come on, this tank has so much potential, it's a nice tank, it's a big tank, so much potential here, but all of that wasted on whatever this disaster is. Now of course we have to bring some salt water into these videos, this is quite possibly one of the worst salt water aquariums I think I have ever seen, and it's not because it's a bad reef tank. It's because it's straight up animal abuse. So this is actually a video, I think I saw it on TikTok and then I found it again recently, but it's this little flower vase fishbowl looking thing um, with a whole bunch of coral in it. And um, believe it or not, the coral is doing good. The coral looks pretty healthy for the most part. There's some SPS coral, there's some Duncans in there, there's some Zoas, everything looks good. But the issue is the fish. In there we have a blue tang and a powder blue tang. Both of these fish need upwards of like a 100 gallon tank minimum. I mean, ideally 150, 180, and so on. These tanks get big, they need a lot of room to graze, and they just swim a lot. I mean, they're out in the reefs in the wild, and they swim miles a day. Well, maybe not miles. I don't know. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> but regardless, these fish cannot live in like a one gallon reef bowl. Um, and because there is so much coral, it leaves these fish very, very little room to swim. There's also this obnoxious air pump in there, which is constantly just bubbling and churning the water. So just because this might make a good coral tank or coral home, does not make it a good fish tank. I mean, once again, some things are meant to not be aquariums, and this bowl is not meant to be an aquarium. These poor tanks need to be in a bigger tank as soon as possible. This next one actually comes from a hotel, but not like a hotel lobby aquarium. This is actually a program that allows you to rent a fish for your hotel stay. I've actually seen this on, I think TikTok, or I don't even know what it was, um, a couple years ago, and it's just now resurfacing, and it's just as concerning as when I saw it the first time. So obviously it's a goldfish in a bowl, it's a comet goldfish, it's just your standard feeder goldfish. These guys, if you want to keep them as pets, they get big, they need large aquariums, they need large homes in general, and a fish bowl really isn't going to do that. And on top of that, you have to pay for the fish per night? Like it's an amenity, like a hotel amenity, you have to pay 
nightly for it. So it looks like it's $3.50. It's not in American dollars though, it is a different currency. I don't quite know the conversion on that. Um, but regardless, goldfish should not be used as company in hotel rooms. I think the general consensus here is that goldfish do not need to be um, companion animals, especially when they're kept in a fishbowl. I mean, maybe if there was like a big aquarium with some goldfish in it, that's an idea. But a goldfish all by himself in this little bowl seems more lonely than a companion to me. This next aquarium is actually a really cool aquarium, um, unfortunately. This is the Fluval Flex Aquarium. It's this aquarium with this radius glass. Instead of being a bow front like, like that way, it's like an opposite bow front, if that makes sense. It's a really cool aquarium. It's an all-in-one tank. However, they only come in 9-gallon and 15-gallon sizes, and then there's another one that is 32 gallons, but it's, like, much bigger than this aquarium. This one looks to be the 15-gallon aquarium. But not only is there koi in there, there's two huge gouramis and three huge koi in this little 15-gallon aquarium. So now the potential was here, but come on, guys. You have to know these fish are going to outgrow your aquarium. Now these koi might have been small when they started out, but clearly they're not anymore. And hopefully they're gonna find a better home soon because this little 15 gallon tank is really not gonna cut it for these guys. Now this next aquarium, there's actually two of them. Unfortunately, they're both equally as concerning. Now the tanks honestly don't really look that bad. And the reason I say that is because I don't see any fish in them or at least in the first one. Um, this first one looks to be a 55 gallon aquarium, hang on back filter, no substrate, pretty much just a basic setup. But the issue is that it's sitting on what looks to be like a dresser or maybe even a filing cabinet. I don't know. Sitting on a small piece of furniture that's less than like a quarter of the entire tank width. So um, in general, aquariums are meant to be placed on aquarium stands or sturdy pieces of furniture. This little nightstand, dresser, whatever you want to call it, I don't even know what this is to be honest with you is not a suitable aquarium stand. Not only is it way too small to support the weight of the aquarium, but when that thing crashes down, that's gonna get pretty messy. But not even a foot to the left, we have the same thing again, but this looks to be like a 28 gallon aquarium, maybe a 29 gallon aquarium. There does look to be a discus in there. Um, these honestly look like temporary setups, to be honest with you. I mean, these are not real aquariums. There's no substrate, there's really nothing going on here. But even just for temporary aquariums, two little fold out tables, for like a potentially 29 gallon tank really isn't gonna do it. Honestly, as I mentioned, this is temporary, but even if it's temporary, this is just a disaster waiting to happen. This can go downhill so, so, so fast, and I would never recommend putting an aquarium on furniture that looks this unstable. Last but not least, equally as concerning as the rest of the aquariums we've been looking at, this is a freshwater aquarium, at least I think it is. I mean, there's some discus, which are freshwater fish, there's an arowana, which is a freshwater fish, but then if we look a little bit closer, there's a lionfish back there. If you don't know, lionfish are very much saltwater fish that live in the ocean, not freshwater aquariums. So once again, this is where I wish I had some backstory to this, to be honest with you. I don't know how this is happening. I don't know how this is possible. I don't think it should be possible, but clearly it is. Um, I'm not going to argue that it's a good idea. For the most part, the aquarium looks bare. There's no decor. It's just basically a glass box of water, which is a pretty boring home for some fish, if I'm going to be honest with you. Arowanas generally are fine in aquariums like that because they are big fish, but discus can get skittish at sometimes and definitely should have some decor in their tank to make them feel more comfortable, especially when they're around two huge predator fish. Discus can be a little bit timid. But as I mentioned, I really wish I had some backstory to this. This is just crazy to me. I don't know how this keeps happening. I swear in every one of these videos, we have some and keeping saltwater fish in a freshwater tank or freshwater fish in a saltwater tank. It's not that hard. Two separate bodies of water. Let's keep them separate. But that is going to be it for this week's version of reacting to the worst aquariums I could find. Keep an eye out for part 10 as it will be coming soon because you guys really seem to like this series. However, that is it for today's video. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching and good bye.